Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing MX Linux on a separate disk without using a USB drive or DVD. MX Linux is a Debian based distribution known for its stability and performance, making it an excellent choice for both modern and older hardware. So if you have hardware over 10 years old, this would be a great choice. So I'm going to download MX Linux, going to mxlinux.org, and then going to download and the current release is 23.6. And so there are three different desktop options available. XFCE, the flagship desktop, KDE, and Fluxbox. And within XFCE, we got X64, and it's suitable if your PC is a few years old. There's 386. It's suitable for systems that are 32-bit only. AHS, advanced hardware support, if you have newer hardware. And finally, the last option here, it's suitable for Pi 4, Pi 400, and Pi 5 hardware. So I'm going to be downloading the first option here, X64. Now I'm going to go into my Downloads folder. And so there's the file. So I'll select the image, hit Enter, or right-click and mount. Open. So this will mount the ISO on a virtual drive. And we can see here that it's mounted on the E drive. Next, I'm going to open up Disk Management. So we'll start Disk Management. And in Disk Management, it shows my partitions and disks. So my first disk here, it's seen as disk zero. It's my SSD, and it has Windows. There's the C drive. My second disk here, it's seen as disk one. It's my NVMe drive. It's just a basic data drive for me with regular files on it. And it's seen as the D drive. And I'll be installing MX Linux on this drive here. I don't need to delete my D drive here. I'll just be using some free space on it. And so my D drive, there is 149 gigabytes free. And lastly, here's the CD-ROM. It's my virtual drive where I've mounted the ISO file. Now this is only seen here in Windows. If I were to reboot, I won't be able to boot from it. So what I'm gonna do is create a new partition on my first disk using some free space from the C drive. So selecting the C drive, and I have 421 gigabytes free, so more than enough free space. Right click, shrink volume, and the size I'll shrink it by. So the ISO is about 2.16 gigabytes, so I'll do 2300 megs. Shrink. All right, there's my unallocated space. Select it, right click, new simple volume. Next, next, next. And then the file system will be FAT32. And then the volume label, I'll just label it as ISO. Next, finish. All right, and there's my new F drive. And I'm gonna go back into Explorer. And then there's my E drive, gonna copy all the contents. And then go into the F drive and paste. All right, it's completed. I'm going to go back into disk management. And after installing MX Linux, I'll be removing this partition. Now this partition, it's seen as a basic data partition and the BIOS should be able to detect and boot from it. But if not, it may need to be seen as an EFI system partition. So to change that, I'm going to go into disk part, start disk part, and then run as administrator. Yes. And now type in list disk. So we'll list your disks. And then so I'm going to be selecting disk zero, select disk zero, and then type in list part. This will list the partitions. And then so it's partition number five, the 2300 megabyte partition. So I'm going to select partition five. And now I'll type in help set ID. And then I'm going to scroll up. And then find the EFI system partition value in hex. Copy it and type in set ID equals, and then paste, enter. All right, we can see that it's been successfully set. And if we go into disk management, we see that it's been set as well. Now I'm gonna reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm gonna do a one-time boot into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that? Go 
go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware, and at the bottom you can see that there's device partition f, the f drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. All right, and it has booted into the installation media partition. Now, if you just select the first option, you can see here it's only searching for USB drives and CDs. And since I'm not using a USB drive or CD, it won't be able to find it. And we see here that it failed, and it's asking if I want to power off or reboot. So what I needed to do is I need to go into advanced options and then go into boot options and then go down to from equals HD, finish booting from a hard drive. So I'm going to select this option and then we go back to the main menu and then we select the first option. And if I were to hit E to edit, a new window comes up and it'll show here on the right hand side the set parameters from equals HD. And now I'm going to hit F10 to boot. All right, it's booted into the live environment and then I'm going to install MX Linux. And so it's going to check the installation media or you can press escape to skip or you can let it continue. All right, it's giving the terms of use and the keyboard settings next. And here it's asking to select the type of installation, regular install using the entire disk, which I don't want to do. I don't want to use my entire disk. So I'll be selecting customize the disk layout next. All right, and we get this screen here about choosing the partitions and it has my NVMe drive here. And so on the left-hand side here, it says choose the partitions. And so there are a number of partitions that you can create for different mount points here. So for example, you got slash boot slash EFI, slash boot slash slash home, user, var, temp, slash swap, and swap. Now the minimum you need is just slash boot slash EFI and slash. So just two partitions. Swap you can set up later as a file in the installation. However, some people prefer to create a swap partition. So I'll also create one here. So I'll create three partitions one for slash boot slash EFI, one for slash, and a swap partition. So I'll need to shrink my drive here, the D drive that was seen in Windows. So to do that, go to the bottom right, there's a little icon here, and this will run the partition management application of this operating system, which is Gparted. Gparted is GNU partition editor. And I'm going to resize my partition here. So right click and resize slash move. And so I'm going to allocate 50 gigabytes for MX Linux. So the free space, I'll do 50,000 megabytes. And then resize move. And then at the bottom, you'll see one operation pending. And then hit the check mark to apply. Apply. And you go to details, and it'll show you that it has shrunk the partition. And then close. And so there's my unallocated space, and now I'm going to make the partitions. Right click New. And then the first partition I'm going to create is the EFI partition for MX Linux. I'll give it a size of 512 megabytes. And the file system will be FAT32. And then I'll label it as MX EFI. And then Add. And then going back to the unallocated space, right click New. And then the next partition I'll create is for swap. So I have 12 gigs of RAM on this computer, so I'll do 12 gigs. And then the file system will be Linux swap. And then the label, I'll just call it MX swap. Add. And then the last partition, right click new. It's going to be for everything else. And then I'll have the file system as the default, the XT4, and then the label. MX root. Add. And we can see down here three operations pending. And then I'm going to apply. Apply. All right, it has completed. And you can go to details to see the details. 
and we see it's created the partitions and then close and then close gparted and we see the new partitions that have been created now if you don't see it you may need to refresh you could just hit the refresh button at the bottom all right and now i'm going to assign these partitions so the 512 megabyte partition it's the efi partition and then use for esp and then partition number three the 12 gigabytes it's for swap swap and then finally the last partition is root for everything else slash and then next and then here it's asking for confirmation so it's just saying it's going to reuse partition number two as esp partition number three as swap and it's going to format partition number four for a slash which is fine start all right the installation has started and there's a few more screens to go through so it's asking here install grub for linux and windows yes i want to use grub Grub is the bootloader that is going to allow me to select between Linux and Windows when I start my computer. And it's going to be installing on the ESP partition. And I'm not going to be creating a swap file as I have a swap partition. And then next. And then here it's asking to fill in your computer name, computer domain. And if you want to use Samba server for MS networking. So Samba is used for file sharing and printing. So you can put in the details in here for the work group. Or if you're not going to be doing file sharing or printing, you can just unselect it. And if you're not sure, you can always install it later. So I'm going to put in my computer name and computer domain and then hit next. And here it's asking to fill in your locale and your time zone and service settings. If you go to view, so these are the common services that are enabled. And if you're not familiar with any of these services, you can just leave the default. And then hit OK. And at this screen, put in your login name, your password. And I'm going to be using a root administrator account. And I'm not going to be auto logging in. I'm going to be putting in my password each time. And I'm not going to be saving live desktop changes. So I'm going to fill all of this out. And then hit Next. All right, and it's completing the final parts. All right, and we can see the installation has completed. And it says here automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. So when I hit finish, it will restart. And when it restarts, it should load the Grub bootloader to allow me to select between Windows and MX Linux. But just to be sure, I'm going to hit finish, it will restart, and I'll go into BIOS to confirm. All right, in my bootloader here, Windows Boot Manager is first, UFI OS is second, and MX Linux is third. So I'll change that so it's boot option number one. And then now save changes and exit. All right, grub bootloader comes up and I got MX at the top here. And it's also found the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. And so I'm gonna go into MX Linux, put in my password. All right, and it's booted up and the welcome screen comes up here. I'm gonna close it. And now I'm gonna reboot my computer to ensure I can get back into Windows. Okay, Grub comes up again and picking the Windows Boot Manager. All right, and I'm back in Windows. So I'm going to open up Disk Management. And so we see here on my second disk, my NVMe drive. And so there are the three partitions for MX Linux. And so the installation media partition, I no longer need this, so I can remove it. And if I right click, delete volume is grayed out. So I'm going to do this in disk part start disk part run as administrator yes list my disk select disk zero list my partitions and it's partition number four select partition four and type in delete partition override and we see it's been deleted there's my unallocated space and my c drive i am going to extend it next next finish and so that's it. That's how you can install MX Linux on a separate disk without using a USB drive or a DVD. I hope this video has been useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.